So let us begin the next lecture. So in the previous lecture we repeatedly used this result or remark we used the following result which I had left as an exercise but let us just see how to do this. Uh, so, let us write it as a proposition. The standard topology and product topology on Rn are equal. So, what do I mean by product topology on Rn? So, Rn is equal to this product n times and we give each factor the standard topology and then we take the product topology. So, proof. So, recall that we had proved that if x is a topological space is a set with two topologies tau 1 and tau 2 b i is a basis for tau i then if b 1 is contained in tau 2 implies tau 1 is contained right. So, and this we had used this result to prove that topologies are equal. So, we will use this once again yeah. So, uh, let tau 1 denote the standard topology on R n and let tau 2 denote the product topology. Okay. So, uh, right. So, the, a basis for tau 1 is given by sets of the form S epsilon a comma well x here. Yeah. So here x is a point in R n. So x is equal to x one x two to x n, right? And this set S epsilon x recall uh, this was those points y in R n such that mod x i minus y i is less than epsilon, right. But this set is precisely equal to the product of b epsilon x i, yeah, where b epsilon x i is this x i and this is the interval x i minus epsilon and x i plus epsilon. Right, and uh, each b epsilon x i is open in R, and therefore this is an element of the basis for the product topology. Right, so since belongs to B two, this is equal to the basis for the product topology. Right. So, this implies that this B 1 which consists of these sets S epsilon is contained in B 2 which is contained in tau 2. Right. So, this shows that tau 1 is contained in tau 2. 
Now similarly let us prove that tau 2 is contained in tau 1. So for that we will show that. So next we will show. that B2 is contained in tau 1. Right. So, what does a typical element of B2 look like? So, an element of B2 looks like product Ui i equal to 1 to n, right, where Ui's are open in R. Yeah. So, uh, let x be a point in this product u i yeah so then uh, right for each i there exists epsilon i such that this b epsilon i x i is completely contained in u i so we choose epsilon equal to minimum of all these i's among these epsilon i's. So, then this implies that b epsilon x i is contained in u i for all i, uh, which implies that product b epsilon x i is contained in this product of u i for all i. Right? But that implies that S epsilon x is contained in because this set is equal to this S epsilon x. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, therefore, what this shows is that So, if n is equal to 2, right. So, this is my u1 and this is my u2, and we have taken any point and we have found the s epsilon around it, yeah. For each uh, x in u1 cross u2, there is an epsilon such that this uh, open square of side length 2 epsilon is completely contained inside u1 and u2, yeah. So, this implies that. So, taking union over all x. So, we get that uh, this product u i uh, is equal to this x and s epsilon x. Right. Uh, of course, the epsilon is depends on depends on x. Yeah, epsilon varies with x, right. So, uh, this implies that. So, since we have this set product of u i's and in the standard we have we can write it as a union of basic open sets in the standard topology and arbitrary unions of open sets are open. So, this implies that this product of 1 to n is open in uh, the standard topology that is tau 1, right. Because we have written it as a union of uh, open subsets in tau 1, right. So, thus this shows that B2 the basis is contained in tau 1 which implies that tau 2 is contained in tau 1. So, this shows that. So, this shows that the standard topology and the product topology on R n agree. So, this is a result which we had repeatedly used in the previous lecture. So, now let us continue. So, next we are going to uh, see an example. So, in this example we will uh, give a set theoretic description of a map and the exercise is to show that 
that map is continuous. Okay. So in order to show that that map is continuous, we will use what we have learned earlier. So let's first describe the map set theoretically. So let H contained in Rn be the hyperplane. h is equal to x1, x2, up to xn minus 1 and the last coordinate is 0. Well, I can write as okay. right, points of this point, this type inside R. Okay. And similarly, let h prime be the hyperplane. So, here the last coordinate, the first n minus 1 can be anything, but the last one we want is 1. Okay. So, let us we can make this both of these. H prime in red maybe. So, this is H prime. And this is H. And, uh, so, we are interested in considering R n minus H prime. So, we will define a map. So, we will define a map which we denote by phi from R n minus h prime to h. So, what is the description of this map? So, we take any point x in R n minus h prime and we take this point p this point P is 1. So, this point is P and this is our x, right. Now, we join x and P by a straight line. Okay. And we extend this straight line till it meets h. Yeah. So, um, this x. Okay. And so, so the description in words is let x be in. So, let me just write this. So, let x be in R n minus h prime, join x and this fixed point p, which is defined to be 0, 1, uh, and let q in h be the point. where this line meets h. So, there will be a unique such point and so, we define the map as define phi of x to be equal to q. Okay. So, the claim we want to make is uh, let r n minus h prime and h have the subspace topology from Rn. Okay. So, then 
phi is continuous. So before we prove the claim, let's make a remark over here. Uh, the subspace to, it is it can be easily checked. So note that H is isomorphic to R n. H is the inclusion image of the inclusion. I from R n minus 1 to R n. Right, so what is the map I? X1 up to X n minus 1, it gets mapped to X n, X1 up to X n minus 1, comma 0. Right, and uh, this map is an inclusion and the standard topology. agrees with the subspace topology from R n. Yeah. And a similar remark holds for H prime. Okay. So, having made this remark, let us prove our claim. So, the idea is to first describe phi in terms of coordinates and then see that each of the coordinate function is continuous. Yeah. So, let us just, okay. so that is like the brief idea or the main point of the idea. So, let us see how to prove this claim. So, the image of H, uh, the image of phi lands in H and uh, H has a subspace topology uh, and so, so recall what we have proved. Uh, so, we have R n minus H prime. So, we can view phi as a map to R n. Right? But the image lands inside H, this H and we have this inclusion and since H is given the subspace topology, so to show that, uh, so this is actually, well, uh, this is phi and let us call this, yeah, this I compose phi, right. So to show that, so to show that phi is continuous. It is enough to show. It is enough to view phi as a map from R n minus H prime to R n, and show that this map is continuous. Okay. So we. That's exactly what we are going to do. So, we will now compute uh, a formula for this map in terms of coordinates. So, let us do that. Uh, so, we, we are going to make this map precise. So, let x x 1 up to x n be in R n minus h prime, right. Uh, every point in the line joining x and p is of the form x plus t times p minus x, yeah, where t is in r. Right? So, that is clear because uh, we have our x and we have this direction p minus x or we can take x minus p. We have this direction, this is the direction of p minus x. So, all points on this line are given by moving along this direction for different values of t. 
right. So, a general point looks like uh, on this line has this has these coordinates this is 1 minus x n which is equal to uh, 1 minus t into x 1 1 minus t into x n minus 1 and the last coordinate is uh, x n plus t into 1 minus x n that is right. So, this is a general point on this line has this expression. So, we are looking for the point which lies on h right. So, we have to set the last coordinate to be 0 yeah. uh, this point is on h if and only if x n plus t times 1 minus x n is equal to 0 that is if and only if t is equal to x n upon x n minus 1. Yeah. And note that this is well defined. So, this t which we will denote by t naught is well defined. Is well defined since x n is not equal to 1 as x does not belong to h prime right. So, we have this t naught is equal to x n upon x n minus 1. So, let us uh, compute what is q going to be. So, q is going to be so this implies that phi of x is equal to so maybe I can write phi of x 1 to x n is equal to uh, 1 minus t into x 1. So, let us compute what is 1 minus t now. is minus 1 upon x n minus 1 right. So, this is equal to minus x 1 upon x n minus 1 minus x 2 upon x n minus 1, x n minus 1 upon x n minus 1 and 0, yeah, ok, right. Uh, so, this means that, so to show that, so therefore, to show that phi is continuous, Uh, it is enough to show that each of the coordinate functions are continuous because R n now has the product yeah well the product topology on R n is the same is the same as a standard topology. So, it is enough to show suffices to show that phi i yeah phi i so, this is from R n minus h prime to R n and then projection onto the ith coordinate to R, but what is this? So, if uh, x 1 up to x n it maps to minus x i upon x n minus 1, right. If i is is strictly less than n and x 1 up to x n maps to 0 if i is equal to n. Okay. Uh, so, we want to show that phi is continuous. So, phi is from r n minus h prime to r n. Right. So, here the standard topology is same as a product topology and therefore, uh, it is enough to show that this is continuous when r n has the product topology. and to check that phi is continuous in the product topology, we just have to check that each of the coordinate functions is uh, continuous and that is exactly what we are going to do. Uh, 
right. So, each of the coordinate functions is given by minus x i upon x n minus 1. So, that is when i is less than 1, yeah. But now note that uh, minus x i, so yeah. So, from r n minus h prime to r, we have these two functions minus x i. Uh, this is, so this is just the projection r into r, we have x, this is just the ith projection, this is minus of the ith projection, yeah. So, if, so this minus, minus x i upon x n minus 1, this is equal to the fun constant function minus 1 times the projection map times the map 1 upon x n minus 1, yeah. So, x n is a continuous function, x n minus 1 is a continuous function on R n and x n minus 1 never vanishes on R n minus h prime. So, therefore, 1 upon x n minus 1 is a continuous function on R n minus h prime, yeah. Therefore, all the product of all these is continuous. All these or these three, these three are continuous on R n minus h prime. So, the last one is continuous because x n minus 1 never vanish, does not vanish as x n minus 1 does not vanish. And so, their product is continuous. Right. So, uh, and of course, the last coordinate function is just the constant function, and it is an easy check that the constant functions are continuous. Right. So, this implies that, uh, so this implies that phi from r n minus h prime to r n is continuous and so also phi uh, from r n minus h prime to h is continuous. Okay, so, this completes the proof. So, now notice that, okay, so let us make some remarks. So, remarks. So, we could have written phi directly as phi from r n minus h prime to r n minus 1, right, as x 1 up to x n maps to minus x 1 upon x n minus 1 minus x n minus 1 upon x n minus 1. And this is clearly a continuous map due to the same reasons as above. And what we can do is uh, we can restrict restrict this map to the uh, sphere minus point. So let's just see what is happening. So let's just copy this uh, diagram over here. paste it here. Okay. So, uh, when we make the sphere, the unit sphere, yeah. so the unit sphere meets h prime exactly at this point p. Okay. So, S n intersected with R n minus h prime is exactly S n minus this point P. This is an easy check which I will leave to you. So, then, so we have S n minus P is a subset of R n minus H prime and here we have this map phi to R n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, 
sorry I should write Sn minus 1 is Sn minus 1. So, uh, if we give S n the subspace topology or S n minus 1 the subspace topology, then this phi restricted to S n minus 1 minus this point P from S n minus 1 minus P to R n minus 1 is continuous. Right. Uh, because restriction of a continuous map to a subspace is continuous. Here note that for that to happen it is important that the subset is given the subspace topology. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, here are some exercises. So, the first exercise is show that phi restricted to S n minus 1 minus this point P to R n minus 1 is a bijective map of sets. So, exercise 2 is uh, so let us psi from R n minus 1 to S n minus 1 minus p denote the inverse. So, a priori is just a set theoretic map. theoretic inverse of this map. Okay. So, then show that psi is continuous. Okay. So, here is a hint to do this exercise. So, we have psi from R n minus 1 to S n minus 1 minus p. Right. Uh, S n this is included inside R n minus H prime and S n minus P has a subspace topology from R n minus H prime, which in turn has a subspace topology from R n. Right. So, therefore, to show that psi is continuous, it is enough to show that this composite is continuous. So, therefore, if you can compute the coordinates of this composite function and show that each coordinate is continuous, so thus enough to compute coordinate functions of this composite and show those are continuous. Okay. So, that is exercise 2 and that is also a hint uh, to this exercise and that sort of leads us to a definition. <coughs> Let f from x to y be a bijective continuous map. Let G denote its set theoretic inverse. Which exists since F is bijective, right? So if G is also continuous, then show that I'm sorry, nothing to show. Uh, then F is called a homeomorphism. Right. 
So, uh, okay, uh, and I'd like to give one more exercise, which is very easy. Right? Let f from x to y be a bijective continuous map. show that f is a homeomorphism if and only if for every u open in x f of u is open in y that's part a of the exercise and part b of the exercises if f is a homeomorphism uh, then show that its inverse g is also a homeomorphism so we will end here